mentioned IT, and so we're moving next to uh, Judy Faulkner. Thank you. And um, several things. I'm, I'm going to focus on, I think, the three things that I took away for what we were being asked. One was, what are the priorities for progress? What are the possibilities? Two, how does it translate to things we can do in our area organizationally? And three, what are the barriers? So going on that, I think the first thing to talk about is it's, it's interesting with evidence-based medicine. I would uh, suppose that oh, a large number of our customers say that they want every decision to be evidence-based. But from speaking to others, I'm coming away with the concept that it's about 10 to 20 percent that's truly evidence-based. And the 80 to 90 percent is not. So how do we have more evidence-based information? Uh, one of the things that we want to do is try to figure out how do we take those 200, little under 200 million patients and come up with a big database that can be used for this. Things I'd really like to do is discover what are the causes to problems. For example, um, thalidomide from years ago and chloromycetin, which my cousin may have died of, um, were things that should have been discovered earlier. How can we do that earlier? Uh, what about autism and Alzheimer's? Can we put that data together and figure out the cause of those things? Uh, how can we compare therapies and outcomes, in particular um, uh, patient-reported outcomes? How do we get that? And then how can we help the physician make the right decision with that information? How do we figure out the efficacy of different treatments? And which one may be best for the patient in front of him or her? One of my favorites is how can we study the extreme outliers, the, the very small percent who doesn't react like everyone else does? In particular, wouldn't it be neat to figure out uh, those who have the uh, the wonderful result of being spontaneously cured of cancer, because you read about them now and then, and can we figure out what's going on there? Identifying side effects of drugs. I mentioned that earlier with thalidomide and chloromycetin, and then there's good drugs, too, and some side effects of those. Uh, so the one was uh, uh, evidence-based medicine and, uh, and discovery. The second one is how do we help the physicians and some of it is through artificial intelligence. Now, my background is math and computer science, so I'm a techie. And um, when I went to graduate school in computer science, artificial intelligence um, was almost considered a fantasy. We had numerical analysis, three areas, numerical analysis, systems, and artificial intelligence. And a lot of people at that time said artificial intelligence was like climbing a tree to get to the moon. So what happens is that artificial intelligence is cool, but it's not as cool as it sometimes looks. The closer you get to it, you realize, one, it's not artificial, it's real. And two, it's not all that intelligent. So um, what it is is it's feeding a computer a whole lot of data and then helping the computer understand how to interpret that data against situations that we want to find answers to. It takes a lot of math, and it takes a lot of computing power. So going back to that, that's behind what's going to help the doctors make a right decision. And there's more than one right decision. So we want to help them make the right decision and um, identify patterns that the physician may not see because there may be too much to look at at any one time. Or how do you help that physician understand, OK, thousands of physicians have had a patient similar to yours. How do we find maybe it was this operation or that, oper or that surgery? Maybe it was this medication or that medication. How do we help them say, well, 12,000 had this one, 14,000 had that, and these are the results that we've seen with patients similar to yours. Um, other things I think that are really important are things such as pediatric um, high blood pressure, which is hard to tell with kids. Uh, it takes a lot of data to do that. 
uh, very small changes that, the, that may not be easy to notice. Sepsis prevention is uh, something that the computers do now, seeing early stage diabetes. So uh, that, that the next thing uh, for physicians is trying to make the systems a joy to use, which is a very high bar. And the bar that the uh, IT groups are trying to do to make it beautiful, to save time, to keep learning from the physicians what will help them, and help our healthcare organizations catch up with what we've done because sometimes they need help, mostly they do need help with that. So what are the barriers? Okay, the barriers. One is don't sever the head from the body and stigmatize mental health because we need all that data to be able to do this. And another is, uh, and by the way, it always surprises me that the billing people see that data. It's the physicians who often aren't allowed to. Um, second is lighten up on the meaningful use rules. Let's support staff place more orders, for example. Uh, allow artificial intelligence to help physicians more. Payers, legal departments, again, should lighten up so that we can do things like let the system associate the orders with a diagnosis, let it select the level of service, let it copy notes forward. Right now, EHR steering is frowned upon, but that's what's going to help.